Perfect. Hi, my name's James, you're on Skeleton Television. I'm sitting here with Rocket Science, album band. They've just released, back over here please, camera. They've just released Different Like You. It's quite an incredible album. First song, Sinful Cowboy. What's it about? Well, you had a postcard, it was at your house, I believe. It was stuck on the wall, it had several old 60s or 50s postcards. Mm. One of them was Sinful Cowboy, this really, really nice well, it actually said Sinful Cowboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was the, the heading of the postcard. And so I had this idea for a while of, of utilising some of these um, old vintage postcards as um, song ideas. Psychic Man, track two. That's a Dave Gray number. Yeah. I believe. Yep. That, that song is the least... It, with different lyrics and different vocal melody, the, the actual instrumental part of the song has been around for you know, a decade and a half or more. Wow. And I've played that in several bands over the years. <laughs> <laughs> I always kind of liked it, but one of my friends, Jamie, said, oh, I'd love to, love to do a cover version of that song, and it was called, um, it was called Sweet Liberty at the time. And I went, oh, if, hey, if you wanted to cover it, then maybe you know, change the words, change, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, change a few things about it, make it shorter, make it a minute shorter, because it went for bloody ages, but, uh, and I kind of thought... it's still quite a long song, that, as it is. Yeah, and then I just sort of, yeah, exactly, it was ridiculously long. <laughs> it, was so, it was so repetitive. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I mean, you're right. harshest critic, but I have read that a couple of times. Actually. Yeah, that's right. I think, yeah, Different Like You is a necessary um, album for us to create together and uh, to actually own and acknowledge this band and the influences and style that we've created as four individuals. Mm. And as already there's been a change after this album, Paul has left, and, um, and Mickey has joined. Introduce yourself. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, Mickey Harper. Don't be nervous. Don't, no, no, yeah, don't be nervous. Yeah. We're in good hands um, here. I could be nervous under my arm. That's got nervous. I don't even know if you need to say that. You don't feel nervous, you're distracted. Well, you got the call, uh, very short notice, really, wasn't it? Because there was, there was a Psychic Man tour, Paul obviously was on that, mm -hmm. and there's only been a number of months, and Paul left the band, and you were called in very, very quickly, you stepped into his shoes, and um, here you are on the road already. Mm. One, one of my other bands is with Kit and Roman as well, so that made it a uh, smoother transition, made it very easy. In terms of walking on the stage, I felt yeah. more comfortable. Because you play in the Dead South, not with these guys, and the Ransom Brothers with these guys. That's correct. Did you, have you got a plan of attack? Have you copied them and then moving on, or are you going to add your own style? Yeah, well, I, um, I didn't try to replicate it exactly. I think that would be the purpose of, um, of a new member of a band. So I had a listen. I tried to keep it still the same song, <laughs> but then just play it the way that I would play it. And that was, I was given the freedom by everyone in the band to do that. So there's no pressure. This is how it's played. Play it like this. It was simply, um, here's the, this um, the skeleton of it. And... Um, play it so it doesn't sound like another song, but make it your own and have the freedom to, to move around within it. And Weekly Dreams, um, that's the, re you know, the first song on the album where the theremin pops its head back up. I don't play theremin, play theremin, theremin plays. Well, how did, you, how did you first get into, when did you first get into the theremin? I, I did some recording with a f fellow called Simon Grounds, and he was a thereminist who turned me on to um, that instrument. How many, that must have been years, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. What are you saying? <laughs> well, it's, it's been on since the first album, so that was. That was, that was that was actually in a previous band before Rocket Science. Did you I start with the guitar, or did you no, go straight to the bass? Straight to the bass. Really? That's I mean, quite unusual. They were just two two fewer strings. <laughs> but you obviously love the bass. Like you're quite, you know, your your sound is very particular to you. You're sort of, you know, quite particular about the gear yeah, you use. Yeah, I'm from the bottom, but what? He loves the bottom. He's, 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 he's down below. He's, um, he's in the, into that frequency. It's a low frequency. I started playing the drums in a gang band, and that was um, a band called Black Rose, and it was just all the guys I lived with at the university. And we, one of the fellows came home one afternoon and said, I've entered us into Battle of the Bands. Nicky hasn't heard the story. Um, 
and which was in two days' time. So we're a band now. So we thought that was great, and we, so we all we all played instruments. But we, so we thought for this experiment, we'd all play instruments that we'd never played before. Right. That's why I took up the drums because there was a drum kit in the house. So I'm, I'm playing drums. Yeah. So that's how I took it up. But that was just a gag. That was a joke. And then uh, the band that I was in with my brother, um, we were we were playing for a couple of years, and we lost our drummer. And we that was it was called Manic Sway. Manic Sway. Yeah. And we we just basically. I took the drums up when he left and sort of started, that's when I started playing seriously. But a lot of the rhythms that we do, you know, came, uh, were interesting immediately as a drummer because um, a lot of the early songs were written um, with Roman playing along with the Rhythm Ace, which is an old, um, like a, a lounge room organ drum machine. And uh, we, 70s. yeah, from the sort of early 70s period and, and the wet, you know, a lot of the rhythms were, were written with, from that using that as the metronome and so I tried to appropriate my playing to the, to the sounds of that those machines. Jukebox Junkie, that's another grey Tucker mm. number. Yeah. Um, what did I do? You, 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 took... you were with me when I was writing it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, I don't, I don't I don't know why, you begged him for a percentage of the publishing, so uh, you got it. Happened. No, I, no you, you... So, yeah, that, that idea was sort of... The, the musical idea was just sort of... I don't know, floating around. I sort of was rhythmically into, like... The silver apples, like the song oscillations, that had the sort of Navajo Indian kind of drum beat. Yeah, jukebox junkie is like a, a character or a caricature yeah. of a person. I was actually imagining the tote, and I was imagining some guy that goes to the tote jukebox and you know come, <laughs> puts all his money in the tote jukebox and plays search and destroy and blah blah blah. In fact, it's on a jukebox means it's like a public kind of space where he's like a, you know real aficionado and he's into stuff. I mean, he's up, you know, he's up late and he's off his face and he's sort of getting a bit you know aggro, a bit, bit melancholy, a bit dark. Jukebox yeah, no, junkie. Jukebox junkie is about. David Gray. Yeah. <laughs> the last song, Alive, um, is a message of love. Is it a simple, it seems to be, from, from reading the lyrics, a simple uh, gratitude of being alive, hence the title. Is that right, Roman? It's, are you happy to be alive at this moment? Or would you rather, <laughs> I'd rather be, rather rather be <laughs> somewhere else? <laughs> <laughs> We'd been, we sort of went away for a little while. Mm -hmm. I mentally went away for a while. Mm -hmm. I wasn't with us for a bit, but um, it, luckily... Well, for, for the few people that, what, what are you referring to your coma? Yeah, I, I was a bit um, unwell from bashing my head mm -hmm. and I went to, into a coma, but um, I, there was, there was a, a period of recovery and there was a period where we weren't sort of in the, um, a, 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 a space of, everyone watching us for mm. a while there but and this was like the song to say hello how are you how are you doing and I basically in the song I tell I tell people what I've been doing you know and and it's sort of like a, a two-way thing represent re representing ourselves thanks very much to rocket science um, for talking about different like you <laughs>